And Elijah Wood. And Elijah Wood! Oh, yeah, this is on now. Woo! You didn't wait for your thing. I, th I was confused. Okay. Somebody said that, that they maybe said my name and then I didn't know what to do. And I was in that precipice where I was like, I, was, I don't know what to do. I was confused and I thought maybe they see me already and uh... It was so, no, it's you so un things. ungraceful. I apologize. That's a for joke. Oh, very clever. Hi, y'all. Hi! Dallas, Texas. It's a good looking crowd right there. Wow. Ra raise your hand if you're wearing something that you probably wouldn't wear to the doctor's office. <laughs> I meant Doctor Who. Thank you very much. Oh my God. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go back to the meeting for a second. When you guys first met one another, when you were gonna start working on Lord of the Rings, can you talk about what that experience was like meeting one another? And, and was there an instant camaraderie? Did it take a little bit of time to get used to each other? At that I'll never forget the first day I met you. Uh, it was at a hotel in Los Angeles. And he, yeah, Sophie Town. And he was coming downstairs from having had a wig fitting. Um, and I was going up to have a wig fitting. And we ran into each other, it was the first moment we met. Of course, I knew who he was. And I was like, oh my god. And we, we went up to each other and we gave each other a hug. That was how we introduced each other. It was like this thing we already knew, you know, we already It wasn't knew. a little hug either, it was a salmon throat at the top of the volcano hug. Totally. <laughs> we met with a hug, that's how it happened. It was downhill from there. <laughs> I remember putting my hands on Elijah's shoulders in a very, you know, big brotherly way and saying, are you ready for this? And he goes, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> and as it turned out, he was. <laughs> I may have been slightly naive of me. Well, it also begs the question, I mean, this, obviously, that was a huge undertaking, not only doing three movies, but doing three movies that took as long to make as those three movies did. Was that a little bit daunting at first, knowing that you were going to be dedicating your lives for such a long period of time to this one project? Yeah, I think it was different for both both of us, to a certain degree. I mean, yes, it, it was unlike anything that either of us or anyone else who made the films had ever experienced before. You know, for Sean, it was he was taking his family over, so it was a really different. You know, he was leaving home. Uh, and his family's home for that limited time. I was traveling to New Zealand, going to live there as you know, a young man on my own for the first time. I'd never lived away from home. Um, so there were those kind of personal elements of it that were sort of unprecedented. You know. But there was also this thing of standing on the precipice of something that no one had ever kind of done before. And there's only so much that you can sort of intellectualize that. Like, at the end of the day, we were also going to make a film, so the very process of it was quite similar to any other films, just that we were there for 16 months. Um, but it, it did feel special. It felt like the beginning of an adventure. I think we all felt like we would know each other for the rest of our lives. <laughs> was it 18 months? Oh, we can tack on two extra months. That's true. Was that 18? Guys. August to December. <laughs> now that's four months. The following December. Sixteen months. Sixteen months. I always correct Elijah, but incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, I, I, I can talk to you guys all day. I want to make this about the audience. Let's start off with some audience questions. We'll start right here, then we'll go here, and then we'll go back and forth. So we'll start right here. What's your question? Okay. Thank you for coming, and this is actually for both of you. Considering the span of roles that you've done, up here. <laughs> considering, the, considering the span of roles you've done from When the Bubble Bee Flies Anyway to Toy Soldiers, Goonies, all that, is there any role or group of roles that you felt defined you as an actor? That's a good question. <laughs> Step it on to a good question. Um, a group of roles. I love the way you ask that. When people ask you about your favorites, oh, it's so hard. My daughter now, my youngest daughter, Isabella will just look at you and say, I don't do favorites. Like, What's your favorite color? I'm not going to, what, the rest of the colors aren't all right? Like, well, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> she didn't like favorites. What's your favorite animal? Her head explodes. She's like, I love every animal. Um, your favorites are hard. I mean, but it's somehow, why is it adults always, why do we do that to kids? What's your favorite thing? That's a lot of pressure to put on a kid. Uh, and they want to tell the truth. They want to be honest. It's like a kid has a hard time, but you know. Anyhow, for me, a group of roles. Well, the, 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 it's a great question. As an actor, Goonies, <laughs> Rudy, and Lord of the Rings are the three movies that I'm most popularly known for. <laughs> that is my 51st date. That's crazy. You were hilarious. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah. Okay. So, but, um, but you know, movie, uh, a movie like uh, Where the Day Takes You, which was uh, a movie where I was 18, 18 or 19, um, playing a homeless <coughs> drug addict in a movie with a really great cast. Remember Paul Rooney, Laura Flynn Boyle, Baltazar Getty, um, the Will Smith's first movie, I think, um, Ricky Lake before a TV show, um, Stephen Tobolowsky. It was really, it was like a, for a movie that cost two cents to make. It was really good, and I I had never done anything like that, where I went so far against myself, of you know, playing a drug addict and, and tweaking and snorting, you know, drugs and stuff. It was it was, and I and in the end, I you know, and I I overdosed heroin on a toilet in Kyle McLaughlin's bathroom. You know, I was like, my daughter saw it the other day, and she was inconsolable, sobbing, inconsolable. You know, and and doesn't and now won't let me talk about you know. Like doesn't like doesn't want to, so it's hard. But um, so that I don't want you to talk about drugs. <laughs> <laughs> she's not really into drugs that much, but the uh, <laughs> but no, she uh, no, she doesn't want to talk about me dying. So like yeah. immortality became real to me. Yeah, that's she does. But in movies, like she can picture you know old old folks home, and that's gonna she teases us about that and what she's gonna do for us and not do for us. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they're really all like that, but Allie's the one who was so affected by it. But anyhow, so but but that movie de defined me, my acting for me, maybe not for everybody else, but knowing that you could go there, that you could go so far away from yourself, and that at a certain point it became uh, really, really satisfying, really fun and intense and hard, and somehow that. The difficulty of it was synonymous with the accomplishments, so that you just want to keep pushing yourself more and more and more. Um, that's that's one. I, I, I could go on. I mean, a lot of times people want to know about emotions in movies, so I sort of can chart my my relationship to being emotional on camera or in you know, in movies and, and stories. And um, that takes a while, and I've already talked. So it's your turn. <laughs> um, that's a very good question. I would say that, that the ice storm was really um, <laughs> it's a really beautiful film. Yeah, that film for me as an actor, you know, I started as a child, so I was eight years old when I started working, and um, that film feels like it was a turning point for me in the way that I approached what I did, the um, the the sort of wealth of. Um, influence that I was able to see from all these incredible actors who were in the film with me and it, it sort of taught me a new process and um, and also the material was un unlike anything I'd worked on and and it was dark and human and had a lot of vulnerable characters and I don't know it was a, it just it, it felt like a, a real turning point for me and it, it, it's a place that I don't know if it defines me as an actor um, I think it's a very difficult thing to pinpoint. <laughs> Um, but it, 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 it felt very special, and I, I still hold it in that regard. There's a scene in that movie where you talk about the bathroom I mean, yeah. on a molecular level, and it becomes a part of you, so it's like your ego. Yeah. I can never go into a restroom ever the same way. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't watch that scene. If <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go right over here.